Hey, what's happened everybody? My name is Hayden Adams with A Designer Who Codes, a channel helping web designers and web developers create better looking websites through code. And this whole tutorial series is focused on Get Bootstrap. In my last video, which I'll link up down in the description below, we created the framework on which Bootstrap works. I created this hello world, and I just noticed right now I spelled hello world wrong for hello word. So I set this piece up, but what I next wanna do is, I wanna create a framework in which this move, because right now it's just sitting at the very top and it's not being very responsive to the size of my screen. So I'm gonna use the container and show you how the breakpoints work inside of Bootstrap. And with that, let's get started. All right, welcome back. In our last video, we looked at setting up Bootstrap. The next thing I wanna do is I wanna go from having a non-responsive site to a responsive site. And that's all about using the container. The container is your main framework in which to work in. So let's do some adjustments. To follow along, I'm gonna be on getbootstrap.com. I'm just gonna copy a few things and explain how they work because this is where everything flows from here on out. I'm gonna head over to the documentation and inside of here is the layout. Notice it's the very top one of all of these options. Inside the layout, we're gonna focus on the container. So what I'm gonna do is, notice how there is a period before the container. When you see periods, that refers to a class. So inside of my HTML, I'm gonna one fix hello word to hello world and what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna cut that out and bring it back in in a second, but I'm gonna say div class equals container and drop in hello world. Note again that I said class container because the documentation says period. Whenever you see the word, or the, the word, when you ever see a period, literally, it refers to a class. So I said div class container pasted back in, I think that's properly indented, hello world, and I'm gonna save. Now if I refresh my page, it kind of indents, check it out. So if I move my browser back and forth, it kind of jumps in different directions. And I wanna show that more in a visual way because it's kind of hard to explain it without seeing actual colors. What I also have to do is, I'm gonna put in a custom CSS to work with Bootstrap. Bootstrap does 95% of the work, but I wanna do the extra 5% on the side. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna create a new file, and say File New, or Command N for short, and I'm gonna save this and say Custom CSS. Note the location of the CSS file is in the same folder as my index file. And custom CSS it is. In the index, I have to link to my custom CSS. And by saying down below, after the link rel style sheet, hit the return key twice. I'm gonna say link rel equals style sheet. And then link the location of that style sheet. I'm gonna say href equals custom CSS. The great part about using VS Studio Code is it kind of knows what to do for me. And I'll hit the greater than symbol and link it up. Here's what I'd like to do first, just to make sure it works. Inside my custom CSS, I'm gonna say body and put semicolon in and say background color. Oh, it used to bring it the very top. There it goes, background color. Let's use hot pink. I haven't used hot pink in a long time. That's pretty awesome. Custom CSS, background color, hot pink, refresh screen, and you have a hot pink hello world. Did I say like best design practices? Anyways, uh, all I did the hot pink was, I wanted to make sure that this link, rel style sheet, href, custom CSS works. If it doesn't, if I did something wrong where I just typed style sheet wrong, 
then that pink wouldn't show up. So I know right away I can stop and troubleshoot this first. We know it's working. If I come back here, refresh the page, and just so you can stop looking at hot pink all over again, let's get rid of it. I just want to make sure that that CSS file works properly. So what I next want to do is I'm going to head back over to the documentation and I want to scroll down for where it says responsive breakpoints. I want to explain what this does. So I'm going to copy all of this right here or I can hit the copy on the right hand side and I'm going to bring this into my custom CSS and paste it in. And let's do some work. So what I'm going to do is, you know what? I don't need this right now. So let's take that out. There it goes. So what I want to do here is after the media area, I'm going to say period container. Remember how I said period equals classes? This is where the period is going to show up. So container, I'm going to say background color equals green. We're going to add a color. It doesn't matter what color you add, just I want to show you what this does in a second. I'll take the three periods out and what I'm going to do is I'm going to say container and background. That was not the spelling of background. Background color, purple. There will be no more hot pink usages, I promise. Down here, we're going to say container and pick your favorite color, background color. We will say if we had purple and green, how about red? And the last one as well, we're going to say container and curly brackets, background color. There is a Dodger blue, actually. It's kind of fun. So all you non-Dodger fans, I'm so sorry. I just added a color for you. We have to do a little tune-up in here. So what I'm going to do is, where it says medium devices, I'm going to select this comment, hit command slash. It's not quite the right commenting system. It just doesn't know what comment it is. So in CSS, I'm going to come over here and make sure these are turned to actual comments where they should turn green. Otherwise, this will not work properly. So making sure the top one and then all future ones below turn green, turn green, and turn green. Now when I refresh my page, notice how it turns red, at least on my screen it does. When I make my screen bigger, it turn blue. So that Dodger blue hits the 1200 mark. When it gets to be the large size or a minimum width of 992, wait for it, there it goes. Now it's gonna hit red. Now when I go above it, it's gonna turn purple. So if I make it even smaller, there's purple. And I'm gonna hit green at the very end. And you just made a responsive site. Now note the last one, that's because the very end doesn't contain it, it's the extra small size. So this essentially equates to small at the top, this equates to medium, large, and extra large. You just made a responsive design in Bootstrap. It looks at the size of the actual device, or in this case, my browser, and if we come back to HTML, that little viewport that we wrote before, with equals device with, that's to see, well, what size is my browser or my device. So note the very end, it just hits pure white because that's like a mobile framework. So now you can see the breakpoints. You just made a responsive design all from the container. This is where everything flows from. Everything you want to actually make responsive fits inside the container. In our next video coming up, I'm gonna focus on the grid and how we can use columns and rows inside the container to make my site extra responsive.